Hey folks, Scott Walters here. Welcome to another episode of Project Brutus on the Bulletproof Garage. In this episode, we cover part three of our engine build on our 7.3 IDI turbo diesel engine, all right? And we're gonna go over things like installing head studs, installing cylinder heads, installing intake and exhaust manifolds, fuel pump, and a few other things. And at the end of the episode, we're gonna go ahead and stab that engine into Brutus. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Here in the Bulletproof Garage. All right, on the head studs, I just take some Molly paste here. All right, put it on the threads. Go ahead and thread them in by hand. Get them started. Okay, now what I've done is I've installed all the studs on this side of the engine and I run them down lightly with the impact. And then when I start to feel a little bit of resistance, um, then I go ahead and finish it up by hand. Now this particular stud was sticking out about this much um, compared to the other studs, all right? You can use calipers, but frankly, it's pretty easy to eyeball it and see, okay? So what I did is I removed the stud and I cleaned everything out. Now I'm just going to run it down by hand and see if that's fixed it. And I'm just looking at the height of the stud in relation to the stud next to it. And you'll know when it bottoms out. All right, that's it. Now it looks like I've got another one here that's a little high. So I'm going to pull this one out and do the same thing. All right. I probably haven't cleaned the hole enough, all right? There's probably some crud down there that's keeping the stud from bottoming out, all right? Now to install the head gaskets, the head gaskets are installed clean and dry. And I'm referring to the surface, all right? So your, um, the surface of the block has to be clean and dry. All right, I had to loosen a few studs so it would go on there nicely. So I'm going to tighten those back down. The head gasket is stamped right here, which side is up. All right, cylinder head's going on. That's progress. All right, everything's going to get a little dab of Molly Lube. All right, um, now we're torquing the heads down. Um, I went ahead and sort of ran them down snug. All right, and we're going to go in, I think, four steps here. Um, so the final torque on these, according to ARP, is 125. Justin at R&D IDI goes all the way up to 150. I'm going to split the baby and I'll probably go up to about 140-ish uh, or so. Um, the way you do it is the pattern that you follow is basically you work from the inside to the outside, all right? So you'll see me sort of going here and here and here and here and here and here and here, all right? And so um, the first step then is going to be 65 foot-pounds. Step two, we'll go to 95. 
that. All right, step three, we're going to take it to 120. All right, the third and fourth round are supposed to be different. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what we're going to do. Now we're at, uh, what did I go? I went up to, so I'm at 137, right? One, two, three. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to go double check them. All right, same process for the other side. All right, installing the push rods, the copper end goes up towards the rocker. All right, rocker arms go next. Okay, folks, on the rocker arms, one thing that you want to eyeball first before you start torquing those down is you see this lifter here, um, that valve is going to be open. Um, so you want to rotate the engine to where the valve is closed and the lifter is all the way down before you torque down that rocker arm, all right? So in other words, you want like this right here, all right? The cam is on the base circle on the intake and the exhaust there, so that one's good to go to go ahead and torque down. All right, once you figure it out which ones are good to go, go ahead and torque them down to 24 foot-pounds. Okay, we're gonna put the water pump on next. Um, I am using some, uh, what am I using? So this is Permatex Aviation Forma Gasket. This is number 80019. And I'm going to put this on the back side of the gasket before I put it on the block. All right, let's go ahead and get the other side of the gasket now. Now this is a Gates water pump. 
and it came with two bolts and those are supposed to be used here but when I compare those bolts to the um, OEM bolts that I have um, they're actually the same size so I'm just going to use OEM bolts um, and I'll be able to check once they're in to make sure that they're not too far uh, they don't protrude too far because if they do they're going to hit your uh, injection pump gear okay okay a little bit more uh, you've got one two three four bolts that you need to put Permatex on some RTV or something because they go through the front cover and they protrude into the area where you've got your uh, your crank gear your cam gear and your injection pump gear all right, so let's see if I can get this on here without boogering up the uh, the gasket. All right, and these all get torqued to about uh, right around 18 foot-pounds. Okay, and I just looked, um, peeked behind here to make sure that these two bolts were not protruding past the nut here on the inside of the front cover, and they're good, all right? They're flush, so no issues there. Um, let me go scrounge up one more bolt. Apparently, I'm missing a long one there. There's a pipe plug that gets installed in the top middle here, and I put some uh, Permatex thread sealant with PTFE on it. That's item number 80632. Okay, we've got another fitting that goes here. Uh, it's a brass fitting. Um, maybe it's a, for a uh, heater hose. I don't know. It's been so long since I've taken this thing apart, I forget what goes where. But that's what it looks like. So, same thing there. Um, yeah, I put too much of that gunk on it, but it'll wipe off. All right, let's talk about some things that happen off camera. Um, I put some assembly lube inside the lifters right here. Um, I poured a little oil on the rocker arms themselves, all right? And I also installed the valve covers. The valve cover bolts are torqued down to 72 inch pounds. Well, they're torqued down to six foot pounds, but my 3 8 torque wrench um, doesn't read that low. But uh, one foot pound equals 12 inch pounds. I'm gonna do some public math here, but six times 12 is 72. So 72 inch pounds on those. I'm using cork gaskets. I may go back and change those to rubber gaskets. I think rubber gaskets are a little bit better, but the cork gaskets are the ones that came in my gasket kit. So they're in there for now. Um, I have painted the valve covers. Actually, I painted one of them, and then I ran out of paint. All right, that's why the intake, uh, the valley pan, and the intake manifold isn't on yet, um, because I don't have any engine paint, and I want to paint the intake manifold separately before I install it. All right. All right, it's time to install the valley pan. Uh, so I'm putting RTV on the mating surfaces. All right, you just drop the valley pan into place. That guy goes in 
goes right here. Yeah, so I've wire wheeled all the hardware and you can see this has been painted as well. And this plug is supposed to get some sealant on it, so I'm going to apply some thread sealant. All right, the plug gets torqued to 40 foot pounds. Done. I'm going to torque these to 72 inch pounds. Yeah. All right, intake manifold going on next. There's a particular sequence that you need to follow when torquing down the intake manifold. So it's uh, the torque spec is 24 foot pounds. All right, now, now it's easy. Basically you start here and you go, you, you work your way around. Um, the torque hasn't changed. On the second round, you're still doing 24 foot pounds. All right, and that's it. Okay, time to install exhaust manifolds. I'm almost done here. Um, I started off with some anti-seize on the threads. That's required um, per the technical manual. Um, you see there's the gaskets in here already. Uh, and then the, the torque is 35 foot-pounds, but it's in two different steps in two different orders, all right? So uh, step one, uh, torque these two. Uh, step two, torque those two. Step three, torque these two. Step four, torque those two, and then you go in a different order. You're still at 35 foot-pounds, but you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. dipstick tube going on next. Um, so there's an O-ring on the bottom here. Uh, I put some grease on it so it'll slide in a little bit better. So you slide it here. The head studs may interfere here a little bit. Why don't we just put the bracket on first and then bend it to fit. Yeah, looks like his head stud doesn't want to cooperate right here, but we'll make it work. All right, good enough for government work. That goes on there. Yeah. All right, and dipstick should be good. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, now this is starting to get exciting. These are my new injectors from my buddy Justin at R&D IDI, all right? So they come very well packaged, they come with a washer, but um, as you go to install the injector, the washer is just going to fall off. So I just take a little dab of grease, and that's enough to keep the washer in place. All right. And I'm going to run them down first, but these get torqued to 35 foot pounds. All right, injectors are on. Okay, fuel pump is going on next. I'm not sure right now if I'm gonna use a mechanical fuel pump or if I'm just gonna go electric. Um, so this is sort of a placeholder at this point. Um, so 
I've already put RTV on the back side of the gasket. I'm not going to put it on the front side because there's a decent chance that I'm not going to be using a mechanical pump and I want it to be somewhat easy to get it off. So I'm going to put um, grease on the other on the uh, pump itself. All right, torque on this should be 24 foot-pounds. All right, fuel pump is on. Okay, folks, so here's what we've got going on. Uh, so the engine, as you can see, it's assembled. It's hanging from the cherry picker, and I'm about to stab it in. Um, I have the oil cooler on. Um, no oil filter. Um, the motor mounts are on. Actually, I need to remove these um, bolts here. Uh, the flywheel is on, and it's been torqued to 47 foot-pounds, all right, with some Loctite. Uh, the starter is not on. I'm going to install the starter after I stab the engine in. Uh, one of the problems that we're going to have to deal with, as you can probably see, the concrete here is pretty chewed up. Uh, and it's going to be difficult to move the engine hoist with this thousand pound engine dangling from it. What I may have to do is sort of get the engine up at the right height and roll the truck under it. All right, so we'll see. Wish me luck. Okay, this isn't going to work as is. Uh, the engine hoist feels like it wants to tip over, so I'm going to have to drop the engine back down, put it on the engine stand temporarily, and move the uh, move this back one notch. All right, these are the sort of shenanigans that you use when it's just you. So, uh, as you can see, um, I've got the engine lifted up, um, but I just can't maneuver the engine hoist uh, with that thousand pound IDI on it and that cracked concrete under it. So, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull the truck under the engine. Cross your fingers. Wish me luck. This might actually work. All right, folks, that is it for this episode. But before I sign off, I have three things for you. One, a simple request. Two, what's coming up next with old Brutus right here. And three, got some bonus footage, all right? So, so number one, my request is simple. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also, 
post up a comment if you'd like, all right? Ask a question, tell me I'm doing something wrong, uh, post a comment, anything, but let's get some back and forth going here, all right? Number two, what's up next with Brutus? Folks, um, we're getting close to making noise here. So the engine is in, the transmission is in, the transfer case is in a million pieces in the garage, but I'm gonna put that together this coming weekend. We'll have a video on that coming up, all right? And the transmission reassembly video is coming soon as well. Now, bonus footage, all right? The bonus footage involves critters, all right? And if snakes freak you out, you can go ahead and stop right now and move on to the next video. But if you don't mind snakes, I just shot a quick video of one that I caught, oh, about 100 yards that way. I thought y'all might enjoy seeing it, all right? So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage. Okay, folks, what we have here is a deadly poisonous cobra moccasin death adder. Um, his venom is enough to kill, I don't know, probably a thousand people, all right? But, uh, and he's a really big snake. He's five or six feet long easily. I know he doesn't look like he's that big, but my hand is enormous, all right? So um, I, uh, I wrestled him for a while, let him bite me a few times just to let him know that he couldn't hurt me, and I'm going to let him go about his way. So, all right, Mr. Death Adder, have a nice day.